I did a poll on my community tab asking people what myths they wanted to see for the next few videos, and this is the result. The first video coming out will be from the Emerald Isle, specifically the Ulster County. The Ulster Cycle is a collection of stories from Irish mythology. Our understanding of Irish mythology is sort of incomplete because it was mostly solidified in history by Christian monks who were not big fans of polytheism. Thankfully for this video though, the story is relatively intact. Today we're talking about a hero of Ireland, Cúchulainn. Cúchulainn's story starts before he was born, with his mother, Diachtina, who is the sister to the king of Ulster, Cruher. And while they were hunting one day, they came across a woman who was about to give birth in a hut. Diachtina helped the woman give birth, and then nursed the child while everyone else celebrated. The next day, though, she woke up to see all the people were gone, except for the baby. Because this is a time before social workers, Diachtina took the child with her back to her brother's castle. Unfortunately, on the way though, the child caught a fever and died. Diachtina was heartbroken over the loss of this child because she was hoping to raise it as her own. While she was crying, she received a vision from Lu, a warrior god of many things, and he told her that the child was actually hers and that he would be born again through her and she was to name him Setanta. And sure enough, what Lu said would come true and Diachtina became pregnant. Diachtina was single though and she was ashamed be pregnant without a husband. People started spreading rumors about her though, and to stop those rumors she killed the child before he was born. The baby was particularly stubborn though, because not long after dying, he came back to life. This time around the baby was nice enough to wait until his mom was married. When she was married, not long after she finally gave birth. And finally, after three tries, Setanta came into the world. And as you probably guessed, Setanta would later become known as Cúchulainn. You'll find out how he got that name soon enough. Even though his mother was already married, that man wasn't really Setanta's father, in the literal sense or in the symbolic sense. His uncle, Krarer, was much more of an adoptive father to Satanta. Satanta liked playing soldier as a child, and he often invited himself along with the other children. They didn't really like him though, and on one occasion, 50 children in Ulster ganged up on Satanta. They first threw a barrage of spears at him, but he blocked the swarm with his shield, so all 50 children charged him. Satanta was overwhelmed until he turned into his warp spasm mode. In this form, his muscles bulged, his hair stood up on end, one eye grew larger while the other shrank and even fell out in some versions. It's basically Super Saiyan, but more disgusting. Warp spasm Satanta wrecked the children. It got so bad the king and his soldiers had to step in and stop Satanta. Kruher asked Satanta why he was attacking his peers, and to Satanta said it was because they were bullying him. Now here comes the part you've been waiting for. This is how Satanta earned the name Cúchulainn. Satanta was hurling balls at his peers because they learned their lesson last time, and they don't exclude him from games anymore. While they were playing, Kruher shouted for Satanta to come with him. He was going to Cullen's house for a feast tonight. Cullen was the town smith. Satanta said he would catch up with Crower though because he was having fun with his friends. So Crower went on his way and arrived at the smith's house. Crower forgot to let Cullen know that Satanta was going to come later on that night. So Cullen set up his guard dog. Later on that night, Satanta was walking to the smith's home for a feast, but the guard dog didn't recognize Satanta, so it lunged at him. Satanta thought fast though, and he took a rock from the ground, put it in the hurler he used earlier in the game. He wound it up and chucked it right at the dog's head, killing it instantly. The dog reasonably shouted in pain before it died, and Cullen and the others came out shortly after and saw Satanta standing above the dead dog. Cullen was heartbroken over the loss of his hound, but did not blame Satanta because he knew he was defending himself. Satanta felt great shame for causing Cullen such pain, and so he promised that until a new one was trained, Satanta would become the guard dog for Cullen. He would become the Hound of Cullen, or in Irish, you would say, Ku Cullen. Ku Cullen lived as the guard dog for a little while, until one day he heard a druid give a prophecy. The druid said, whoever takes up arms first today shall become a legendary warrior, but he will also be doomed to a short life. Cúchulainn, caring only for fame, rushed from his guard dog duties over to his uncle's castle and he asked him for some weapons. The uncle gave Cúchulainn some weapons because, you know, that's the responsible adult thing to do. 
The druids saw Kukulin with weapons and went over to Krar to tell him about the prophecy. Krar then went to Kukulin and asked if he realized what he just set himself up for. Kukulin said, who cares if I die? I'm gonna be famous. And you know, considering the fact I'm talking about him now, yeah, he got what he wanted. Kukulin had a few other notable achievements that I can't go over for time's sake, but I'll say a few. One time, he caught a deer alive on a dare purely because someone said it couldn't be done. He also fought off an army of shadow people all by himself, scaring them away from Ulster. And then another time, he was bored and he thought, eh, you know what, I'm gonna go kill some people. And he went and killed a few of Ulster's enemies for fun. You know, just regular kid stuff. The next part of Kukulin's story takes place during his teen years. Despite most teens suffering during puberty, Kukulin's doing great. He's incredibly good looking, so much so that the men of Ulster worry that their wives, daughters, and sisters will leave them for him. To make sure this doesn't happen, the men of Ulster tell Kukulin about this cute girl in another kingdom, and he went off to meet her. The two of them met in a field, and the girl introduced herself as Emmer, and Kukulin was head over heels crazy about her. Emmer's father, though, didn't want her anywhere near Kukulin, and he forbade them from seeing each other. He made a decree that no man could enter his country without killing a hundred men first. Emmer told Kukulin this, and he was like, alright, sounds simple enough. Red flags, people! Being okay with murder is a red flag! Emmer told her father what Kukulin said, and her father did not expect that kind of reaction. Worried of the impending massacre, Emmer's father traveled to the court of Ulster to observe warriors' training. He singled out Kukulin and told him, as the mightiest of warrior there, he should go harness his skills with the war goddess, Skanok. Kukulin was hyped for this new adventure, and he gladly accepted the journey. Before leaving though, he told Emmer he would remain faithful. And you'll see just how quickly he breaks that promise. Kukulin arrived at Skanok's castle, and Skanok sent her daughter to go welcome the new arrival. When the daughter laid eyes on Kukulin though, she immediately fell head over heels for him, and the mother took notice. Surprisingly though, Skanok allowed this, and even encouraged the two of them to, uh, get intimate. One night, while they were playing games, I guess they got a bit too loud, because one of Skanok's guards thought Kukulin was trying to kill the daughter, so he went up to save her. When the guard walked in on them though, he did not expect to see what he saw, and Kukulin murdered him because they couldn't finish their game. When Kukulin calmed down though and he realized what he did, he felt bad and told Skanok he would take the guard's place until a new one could be found. Huh. Deja vu. While at her castle, Kukulin became Skanok's best warrior, second only to another student of hers. Ferdiad. Keep him in mind, he'll be important again later. Kukulin was such a good warrior that he earned Skanok's trust, and she gave him her deadliest weapon, the Gae Bolga, the spear of mortal pain and death. When the spear hits its target, it enters the body through the wound, and barbs sprout out from the tip, and they travel all throughout the body. Anyway, one day, Skanok's arch nemesis, slash sometimes sister, Aoife, arrived at her castle. Skanok didn't want her people getting involved in this family affair, so she slipped everyone a sleep potion. Kukulin didn't need much sleep though, and he woke up right in the middle of Skanok and Aoife's battle. Kukulin challenged Aoife to one-on-one -on -one combat, and despite struggling a little bit in the beginning, it was the first time he's ever struggled against an opponent, he won. Kukulin decides to spare Aoife's life on three conditions. Number one, she release all the prisoners she took during this attack. Number two, she never attacks Skanok's land again. And number three, she bears him a child. Yeah, that last part gets a little bit messed up. And you know what makes it even worse? He's only 15 by this point. Aoife fulfilled Kukulin's request, and soon enough she was pregnant. She returned to Skanok's castle to tell Kukulin the child was on its way, and he gave her a ring saying, when the child is seven, tell them to come to Ireland, but he isn't allowed to tell anyone his true identity. This was a bit of a miscommunication though, because Kukulin meant, don't tell anyone I have an illegitimate child, but Aoife took it as, don't let the child tell anyone their real name. When his training at Skanok's castle finished, Kukulin returned home to Ireland, ready to marry Emmer. Emmer's father learned of Kukulin's return and panicked, put out dozens of guards at the castle to stop Kukulin from entering, but Kukulin didn't care. Kukulin also didn't forget the decree, no man shall enter this county without killing a hundred men. And Kukulin did exactly that on his way to meet Emmer. Kukulin killed all the guards and Emmer jumped into his arms. They went back to Ulster, but when they told the druid they wanted to get married, they were reminded of a ritual where the king must sleep with every new bride before the groom does. Kukulin was outraged by this and went on another massacre. To stop him, the druid and another warrior ensured Kukulin that they would sleep in between the king and Emmer to make sure nothing happened. Kukulin calmed down a bit and agreed to these terms, and afterwards he and Emmer were happily married. 
Not long after Kukulin and Emmer's wedding though, Ulster was invaded. It all started when Queen Maeve and King Alil were arguing over who was wealthier before their marriage. After a long argument, they concluded Alil was wealthier because he owned a cow and Maeve didn't. The Queen couldn't stand losing though, and made a plan to capture the most sacred cow in Ireland, the White Bull of Ulster. To ensure the plan was the right thing to do though, she sought out the advice of two future seers a druid and a poet. The druid told her that no matter what happens, she will return home, but the poet told her the future is full of blood. She decided the druid was a better source and raised an army to invade Ulster. Now here's a little background story within the story. A long time ago, a man of Ulster had his wife race a horse while pregnant. She won the race, but was so enraged at her husband for making her do that, she cursed the men of Ulster to suffer in labor pains during their time of need. And it just so happens that getting invaded by Mev's army was one of those times of need. Fortunately though, Kukulin is still a teenager by this point, so he technically doesn't count as a man yet, and he's able to fight. Now Kukulin knew an invasion force was coming, and he would occasionally pick off soldiers in Mev's army who scouted ahead, and he left their corpses around as warning signs. Mev was horrified by this, but stayed firm because she wanted that white bull. When her army finally arrived at Ulster, Kukulin challenged Mev's army to single combat. He challenged every soldier to fight him one on one. And they agreed. And every time, Kukulin came out on top. It got to the point where they started cheating with multiple people jumping Kukulin. And every time, Kukulin won out. Even though Kukulin is an amazing fighter, this was still a difficult task. And every fight wore him down just a little bit more. Thankfully for Kukulin though, his father intervened. In case you forgot, his father is Lou, an Irish god. Lou came to Kukulin while he was taking a bath in a river. He knocked Kukulin out and started healing his body. And over the course of three days, Kukulin was brought back to full strength. When Kukulin awoke, he found out while he was out that the children of Ulster went to defend against Meb's armies. Obviously, all these children died fighting a regular army. And when Kukulin found out, he warp spasmed and started slaughtering hundreds of men. Kukulin was so terrifying that no men in the army wanted to fight him, single combat or otherwise. The massacre was so horrifying that it caught the attention of the Morrigan, also known as the Phantom Queen and the Goddess of Death. The Morrigan was so impressed by Kukulin's prowess in battle that she went to his tent that night to try and seduce him. But Kukulin was really tired from the day, so he turned her down, and the Morrigan was outraged at this rejection and said Kukulin would rue the day he rejected her. Man. The one day the guy keeps it in his pants and the woman swears vengeance. Of all people to turn down, you turn down the goddess of death? The one who is in charge of your afterlife? Oh, not a smart move. Mev still had one weapon up her sleeve. A mercenary she hired in this war. Ferdiad. The queen explained the situation, but Ferdiad refused to fight because he did not want to kill someone who he considered a brother. The queen offered Ferdiad everything he could imagine. Land, jewels, a chariot's waist worth of woman, herself and her own daughter even, but Ferdiad rejected all offers. The queen was now very upset at her mercenary not doing the one thing she paid him to do, and in response, she said to him, Well, I guess Kukulin was right. You won't fight him because you know he'd kick your butt. Upon hearing this, Ferdiad charged out of his tent and onto the battlefield, ready to beat the crap out of Kukulin. When he saw his old friend, Kukulin felt a tinge of sadness, and he asked him to turn away. Ferdiad would not let his honor be degraded anymore though, and the two clashed swords. Over the course of several days, they were evenly matched. Even when Kukulin entered his warp spasm form, Ferdiad still managed to stay alive and fend Kukulin off. When Kukulin realized even the warp spasm form couldn't beat Ferdiad, he knew he had no choice left. Kukulin reverted back to his regular form, and he grabbed the Gaia Bolga, and with one throw, he ended his battle against Ferdiad. Kukulin cried as Ferdiad screamed in pain before quickly being silenced by the barbs. Kukulin promised he would not fight, for the rest of that day at least. Thankfully though, around that same time, the other men of Ulster were relieved of their labor pains and joined Kukulin in the fight. They routed Mev's army, but Mev didn't care. Why, you ask? Well, while her men were getting massacred, she snuck behind into the castle and stole the white bull from inside. Kukulin actually saw her running off with the bull, but he didn't kill her because he didn't want a woman's blood on his hands. <sighs> I'm just at a loss for words. His friend died so that Mev could get that bull. Thankfully, the bull wasn't gone for too long. Mev returned to the castle and bragged to her husband about how her bull was better, and she wanted to see which of them would win in a fight. They had the bulls fight, and the white one won. Shortly after winning, though, the white bull ran back to Ulster. Mev didn't care, though. As long as her bull beat her husband's, 
We jump forward again. A boy shows up on the shores of Ulster, but refuses to give his name. Now this was very taboo in Ireland. So it got a lot of people really mad really quick including Cucullin. And by now, you know what happens when Cucullin's mad. When Cucullin met the stranger, he demanded they say their name. The child refused to say his name though, as he was taught not to. Cucullin then stabbed the boy because he refused to identify himself. And as the boy lay dying on the ground, Cucullin saw his ring. And suddenly, Cucullin realized what he had done. And he was ashamed. This next story takes place around the time of Samhain. The people of Ulster were preparing for their yearly festival, but Cucullin was a little sad though because his uncle wasn't with him. While Cucullin sulking to himself, a flock of birds landed in a pond nearby, and all the women were smitten by their beauty. One woman went up to Cucullin and asked him to kill the birds so that they could decorate their clothes with their feathers. Cucullin asked, why should I slay a bunch of birds who did me no wrong? The woman responds, we just want to look pretty for you, Cucullin, to which he replies, good enough for me, time to commit avicide. Cucullin then killed all the birds and presented their feathers as gifts to the women of the village. Emma got really jealous though, and wants Cucullin to pay her more attention. Cucullin promised her that the next batch of birds he would kill would be just for her, and sure enough, when they landed, he attacked them. For some reason though, these birds weren't going to go down easily, and this got Cucullin mad. As he was attacking, he didn't realize two women sneak up behind him, and the women attacked Cucullin and started whipping him, nearly to the point of death. When Cucullin was found by some men of Ulster, he was bleeding out. They brought him back to the village to heal, and he was bedridden for a year. The only reason he got out of his bed is because Emmer finally came into his room and said, I know you're faking this. Your dad is a god of medicine. You should be able to heal yourself. Cucullin covered his face and healed his wounds. And then he hopped out of bed like nothing happened. He then went back to the spot where the beating happened, and he saw a woman there waiting for him. Cucullin's ready to fight, but the woman says, Hey, so I'm from the other world, and I was wondering, can you help us deal with something bad down there? Cucullin rightfully asked, Why would I help anyone who tried to kill me? The woman replies, There's also this really cute girl named Fan down there. And with that, Cucullin agrees to help. The woman brought Cucullin to the other world, and he killed the spirits with ease, because he's Cucullin. Once Cucullin kills the evil spirits, he and this otherworldly girl have some really fun nights, and they agree to meet up again at some point in the future. To backtrack a little bit though, Emmer saw Cucullin leaving with the beautiful woman to the other world, and she got the technically right impression just with the wrong person, and she was pissed. She learns that Cucullin made plans to meet up with this otherworldly woman again in the future, so when that day came, she arrived at the spot with 50 other Ulster women to kill the homewrecker. Cucullin and Fand were in the middle of something very important when Emmer and the other woman showed up and were ready to kill them. Cucullin tries to negotiating with the women and Emmer by saying, and not even making this up, what equates to, why can't I have two girlfriends? Emmer gets even angrier upon hearing this and threatens to leave Cucullin. Meanwhile, Fan starts feeling pretty bad about ruining their marriage. And all of a sudden, Fan's husband appears, visible to her but invisible to everyone else. He gave Fan an ultimatum, either stay with Cucullin or come back with me. Fan decided to go with her original husband because she felt Cucullin would be happier with Emmer. Although I personally think it might also be because she realized if Cucullin cheats on Emmer, he's probably going to cheat on her. When Cucullin realized Fan was gone, he fell into a great depression and secluded himself with the mountains. Eventually he did come back down though, but he asked the druids to give him a potion that wiped that memory of Fan so that he would be happier not remembering her. Emmer saw this potion and wanted to swig herself because this entire scenario brought her so much pain she'd rather forget it. At long last, we reach the end. The end of the tale of Cucullin. So, remember when the Morgan tried seducing Cucullin, but he turned her down? Well, she's finally getting her revenge on him. The Morgan will get her own video eventually, but for now, you just need to know she's the goddess of fate, meaning she has control over everyone's destinies. And it just so happens she has decided that Cucullin's is ending that day. Cucullin was out for a chariot ride with his charioteer, and they stop by some old ladies who are cooking food. The old ladies offer Cucullin a piece of food, and he says, Sure, what is it? They answer, an old family recipe, dog meat. Now, this puts Cucullin in a bit of a bind. On one hand, it's very taboo in Ireland to refuse food when offered. But on the other hand, it's also very taboo to eat dog meat. No matter what he does, he's breaking a vital societal rule. Cucullin decides it would be worse to refuse food, so he eats the dog meat, and doing this weakens his powers a little. While Cucullin was eating dog meat, another piece of his demise was off somewhere in the forest. A man named Lugid was planning to kill Cucullin. Why? Well, Cucullin slept with his mom. That's it. Cucullin just slept with his mom. And Lugid's offended. 
While Lugid was planning his revenge, he actually saw Kokalan riding along with his charioteer. This is just after the dog meat incident, by the way. Lugid took aim with his bow and arrow and shot three arrows. First hitting the charioteer, then hitting the horse, and then finally Kukulin. Lugud went down to his perch to finish the job, but Kukulin asked for one final drink of water. Lugud granted this wish, so Kukulin dragged himself over to a lake. While at the lake, Kukulin crawled up against the rock and, and tied himself there using rope and some of his intestines. He did this so that way he could die standing on his feet. Kukulin dared Lugud to strike him down, but Lugud decided to take the easy out and wait. He waited until he was sure Kukulin was dead, and he knew this was true when he saw a crow land on the corpse's shoulder, signifying the Morrigan had taken his soul. Lugid went over to decapitate Kukulin, but when he did, a flash of lightning came down and caused Kukulin's arm to move in such a way that it cut off Lugid's arm, Kukulin's final act of defiance. Kukulin was eventually avenged by another family member, and it is said that on the night of his funeral, the people saw a chariot riding across the sky. Wow. I'm done. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the Kukulin video. I figured since I haven't done a video since January, I'd give you guys an extra long one. If you made it this far, then you probably like my content. If you're willing, I just opened up a coffee recently where you can donate a small bit of money to me for my videos. Please only donate if you have the ability. Nobody should go into financial troubles for a creator they like. Giving this video a like is more than enough support anyway. Let me know you got to the end in the comments. Follow me on Twitter and join the Mythology Multiverse Discord if you want to learn more about mythology and talk with me. And until next time, have a good one.